Welcome back to the Groomsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Uh, today I'm using Olympus. Um, this is by Elysian Shape Soaps. I've reviewed this a few times before, so I'm not going to go into depth on it. I really like the soap. I really like the base. It's like one of like a top five bases for me. It smells really, really good. A very aromatic scent. Very stage forward. That's about the extent I'm going to go in the soap. I've got it all whipped up and lathered here. Uh, lathers up fantastically. I've got a huge bowl of lather right now. Uh, this is a Voight & Kopp uh, brush made in Italy. This is an African black wood with a copper ring and a copper coin on the bottom there. Works great. And But the highlight of the razor is, or the highlight of the shave today is the razor. So I got a new razor today, like a lot of people this week. Uh, Blackman have been shipping out all the initial pre-orders for the new Osprey. So this is an adjustable razor. I'm sure you've probably seen videos before. And then some of the guys, they got the pre-releases out to get, you know, some viewership out there and, you know, answer some questions before the initial release came out. So like Heavy Shades had a video and Ken Surfs and some others out there. So I'm not going to go crazy in depth and all like the technical details that, you know, they probably already covered and you've probably already seen. And you could probably look up on their website. Um, I do really dig the design. Uh, obviously, it's an adjustable razor. Got this brass insert that's removable for weight if you want to have a lighter razor. I do dig the aesthetics of it. Uh, I think it's a really sharp looking razor and kind of stands out amongst its peers. Uh, it's got the hollow handle for a hollow handle uh, base um, base plate, base plate, razor stand. Uh, I think some of the things that some people didn't like is you have to unloosen the handle slightly in order to adjust this uh, adjustment collar on here. And, you know, they're like, oh, why do I have to adjust it to, or why do I have to loosen the handle to adjust it? And I'm like, well, it's not like it's unheard of, right? Like if anyone who's ever used a Gillette Fat Boy, which is the majority of people that do wet shaving, right? Everyone's used a Gillette Fat Boy at some point or will at some point, even if they're new. Uh, the Fat Boy, you have to do that. You have to unloosen, you have to untighten the knob at the bottom to loosen the TTO doors a little bit, make your adjustments, and then tighten it back down. Otherwise, you can damages the mechanism inside the razor. Same kind of concept. It's not exactly the same, but whatever. So you just loosen the razor a little bit, make your adjustments, tighten it back up. Um, little arrow kind of points down right here into where you want to go. It's got one to nine settings. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump at four. Uh, yeah, there we go, four. Middle of the road. I've not used this razor before. I'm using this for the first time right here on the video with you. I have a Brand new, first use. I don't know what I did with my blade box, but a brand new um, Gillette seven o'clock black super platinum. That's the blade I uh, prefer most nowadays. And so that's what I loaded up in here. First use, haven't been used. And I'm gonna wet my face. I got some pre-shave already loaded on here. Some uh, Noxzema face cream that I use for pre-shave like Parasso. It's a little bit dried up while I was talking, so I'm going to add some water. We're going to get right to it. Uh, I didn't say already, my last shave uh, was actually on camera with the Shield Gem Razor. It was on Sunday, um, so I haven't shaved in four days. It's Thursday here. Uh, I was gonna shave, and then I was like, oh, my razor's out. My razor got here on Sunday in the local area. And then Monday being a federal holiday, there was no mail. And so I was waiting all day Tuesday for it. And my regular mail didn't even come until hours after it normally comes. I think they were all backed up from all the extra mail from a holiday weekend. So they were busy, I'm assuming. So my mail came later, but didn't have any of the packages we were expecting. And then we got some packages like in the early evening around dinner time, but not all of them. And so we're like, I uh, hope they didn't lose some of our stuff. I hope they didn't lose my razor. And then apparently I found out USPS will deliver after 10 p.m. Because 10.15 is when they dropped off my packages on my porch, uh, according to my ring doorbell. I had already gone to sleep at that point because I had work early, but I was pretty shocked that they were delivering after 10 o'clock. I didn't think they would deliver that late because, you know, it's kind of a security concern to drop off. I think we had like six packages. My wife had a bunch of stuff from how for Halloween that she had bought. Costumes and stuff for the kids. And it all arrived. So we had like seven boxes out there. 
And they luckily put it to the side a little bit so it wasn't just standing right in front of the doors like an advertisement for anyone that walked by our house, but still, 10 o'clock at night. And then, you know, I just sat out there all night because I had gone to bed. My family was asleep. So I didn't see it till I woke up at 5 in the morning and saw I had a notification from Ring. So I got lucky. Obviously, nothing got stolen, but we're getting to that time of year when people start doing the whole porch pirate thing more often. And I'm curious, I'm gonna go try and look up the USPS policy now and see if they even have a policy about how late they're allowed to do delivery. Not that I'm gonna make a stink of fuss or anything, I'm not gonna like try to get anyone in trouble for dropping it off at 10 o'clock, I'm just curious. Um, if you didn't, I guess I could show you real quick, I didn't do it before. So it's a standard three-piece razor, it's not, it's, you know, standard handle, standard threading, hollow handle with a brass insert, three-piece design, my blades in there. So all the adjustment mechanism is inside that base plate. It does have really nice, uh, this whole base plate coverage right here stays with the blade. So you have complete clamping on the blade except for the blade edge. And it's just this guard edge, you can kind of see, it's the, the guard edge that adjusts itself, not the base plate, or not the whole base plate. I think it's a pretty cool design. It looks really cool. It's, it seems very functional. I like how you can kind of see how it works. Making sure I'm still on four. Number four for four days growth. Seems poetic. Yeah, it's super smooth. Uh, kind of riding the, the cap a little bit there. I ride the guard like a steep, like you would if you were maybe using the Blackbird or the, the Ambassador. I don't get a lot of blade feel. But riding at a normal 30 degree angle, and that's where I'm getting my blade engagement at. This is like stupid smooth. Oh man, that was crazy. Do you guys like to see the shots where, you know, I'm gonna shave off all this growth and then show you this like money shot of all this lather with like whiskers in it? Do you wanna see? If you don't wanna see, should hit the little 30 second skip forward team right now. I'm gonna show the people that wanna see. It's just mowing it down. It's, this is crazy smooth. I'm not gonna adjust it. I'm gonna leave it at four. It's not like, I'm like, oh, okay, it's, I'm at four and it's super smooth. Maybe I should see how high it can go. I'll do that another day. I can definitely feel the blade engaging. It feels very efficient. So I'm just gonna ride out this four and see how it goes. If I thought it was too mild, I might adjust it. But I think this four is gonna work just fine. This is like a superior leather level of smoothness so far. I'm really curious how it's gonna feel against the grain. I've always really liked Blackland razors. I've not always got along well with the razors. I really wanted to like the Blackbird. I just don't. I've bought and sold at least three Blackbirds, maybe four. But I've tried it so many times. I'm like, ah, it's been like a year. I'll try it again. And then I get it and I try it and I still don't like it and I'll sit on it for a week and I'll try it again and I still don't like it. And I try different angles and right in the guard and right in the base and different blades and whatever and I just can't, I just didn't, that razor wasn't for me. I know some people, it's the best razor ever, which is great, it just didn't work for me. But it was unfortunate because I really like the aesthetics of it. I really like Blackland as a company. I think they're honest, straightforward. Um, I've tried the Vector. I was pretty new into wet shaving at that point. I kind of got it a little too early, so I might have a different opinion of it now than I did back then. Uh, back then, my opinion was AC blades are too long, and I don't like the way it feels going across my neck. 
because that blade's too long. So I traded it. Uh, I had the gem razors. I like the gem, the saber. I did kind of get to a point where I felt like the level two was the, obviously the more efficient of the two blade split options, but then I got to a point where I felt like the level two wasn't really rocking my boat anymore. I think it was all right. It just wasn't quite as efficient as I wanted. So I'm like, I just don't use it that often just because of that. And it kind of just sat around for a while and eventually I decided I shouldn't just have these razors that aren't doing anything. So I sold it off and bought something else. They are redesigning the saber. I'm not sure what that entails, if they're gonna go uh, for a more efficient option or just, you know, redo the design and make the overall design better or both. Uh, but I know that they are redesigning it, like a saber 2.0 or whatever. No, no, any detail on it yet, except that it's happening. It was in the newsletter. I'm not, I don't have like inside scoops or nothing. And what else have I tried of Blacklands? I never tried the Arrow. That was the one razor I never tried. I thought about it a couple times. And I just never pulled the trigger. And every once in a while I'll see it on the buy sell trade page and I think about it. Um, I tried the Tridere, the Tridere. I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. I think it's a Tridere, Tridere. Nah, I don't know. Initially made by another company that um, stopped. I can't remember why. I read about it once. I can't remember if they just, you know, went out of business or they had family stuff come up or whatever, but they kind of stopped. And uh, Blackland made a deal with them for their design. And so they were producing the Tradiri under the Blackland label for a long time, but it was based off that design and that other company. Um, and with their permission and everything. And anyways, I borrowed it from a friend and uh, Fayez actually. I think it was the open comb. Pretty sure it was the open comb. I, I really liked it. I think they just discontinued that. Or they're getting ready to discontinue it. I, they were Last time I looked, they were selling the last of the stock for that. And then they were going to not make any more. Although they said that with a dart. And they brought the dart back. So there's always hope. Yeah, okay, if you missed out. I didn't buy one. I thought about it. I enjoyed using it the one time I got to borrow it. But I just didn't buy it. Um, the dart. Did like the dart. Uh, I was excited when I first read about the dart because it's kind of labeled as being as having less blade feel than the Blackbird. It's just so smooth, guys. And I was like, yeah, a little less efficient and a little less blade filled in the Blackbird's exactly what I want. I think I'll like this one better. I like the, you know, the, black, the dart look cool. And I can't remember if I bought one back in the day. I think I bought one. I'll have to buy a trade page, I think. And then I didn't like it. <laughs> I felt that, uh, and I don't think I was the only person that felt that way, but I felt like the description about it having less blade fill in the Blackbird was not accurate. Uh, I felt that it was still pretty, and maybe it, it arguably does measurably. Um, I'm not doubting the, the specs of it, but on my face, it felt pretty blade forward still. So it wasn't enough of a difference to sway me. Um, I tried that one time and then uh, Fayez and Sack both bought them when they did the re-release of them. And then one of them let me borrow it again. I think Fayez let me borrow it. So I tried it again and revisit it. You know, it had been whatever, a year or more, whatever it had been. But I still did not like it. It's a max level play feel that I like, and that had exceeded it. So that pass was fantastic. I didn't have any problems um, doing my ear to neck, which I sometimes have, although I still need to get some more obviously. I'm gonna do that against the green. 
but that pass was super smooth. Anyways, I've tried almost everything Black Thing has had um, on offer. I think that was my only point for that long little story there. I do like them. I do like the Raiders. They have some really cool designs. The aesthetics are really awesome. I was excited when this Razor came out. I think I was kind of ambivalent at first. I was like, oh, okay, they're working on it just a lot. That'll be interesting. Or not, you know, we'll see. I'm curious what it looks like. I was curious what the price point was. And then uh, when they started putting the videos out and showing it, I was like, oh, that looks kind of neat. I kind of dig that, that hollow handle um, design with like the kind of windows in it. I don't care much one way or the other, but you know, for a hollow handle design over a solid handle design, you know, there's weight stuff differences and everything. I just like the the design, the cutouts on it. I thought it was super slick. Um, I thought it was pretty. It's a pretty genius idea to make something that different and uh, have that brass insert in there. I do. I did have some concerns about the the brass and the stainless steel um, corroding because those you know different metals touching like that can cause a specific kind of corrosion. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Um, galvanic corrosion, mm, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, uh, I asked Blackland about it, um, just a comment on their YouTube video, uh, one of their later YouTube videos and they're getting ready to wrap up the design features. And so I asked if there's any concern about, you know, corrosion between the brass and the stainless steel and they said, no, there's not. Uh, I know that depends on a couple different factors. Uh, I didn't get the details with them. So they said, no, that's not a factor. They thought about it. It's been considered and they don't think it's an issue or will be an issue. So I took them at their word. I'm not super worried about it. I imagine every so often I'll probably pull out that brass insert and uh, just make sure I don't get any like lather stuck in there to, you know, speed along the, any weird processes that's going on and make sure it's all cleaned up. I don't think that's really, it's not really difficult. You just got to get a screwdriver handle. It's a little normal flathead. I think it's a flathead. Yeah, it's a flathead. You just stick it in there and unscrew it and it slides right out. I've seen the videos of people doing it. I haven't gone to look for a screwdriver for it. I know I have one that would fit in there. I just don't know where, it, where I put it. Or my kids put it because my son likes to use my tools for whatever, fixing his bike or something. Kids cannot put things back where they belong. It took me like three months to find my hammer once. It just disappeared off the face of the earth. Still have not found any of the nozzles for my um, my pressure washer. I said, hey, I put these in the cabinet above the fridge. I don't remember why I put them up there, but that's where I put them. And he goes, yeah, mom was cleaning the house and she didn't want them in there. So she asked me to go put them up. I was like, okay, what'd you do? She said, oh, I put them in the garage. They wouldn't get lost. Where in the garage? I don't know. But where? I torn apart that whole garage. They're not out there. Maybe he meant to. He's easily distractible. He might have just got lost on the way and maybe he thought he had trash his hand too away. <laughs> I wouldn't be totally, totally surprised. And one little weeper right there. Super smooth against the grain though. I don't know why I'm so surprised. I remember looking at this razor and being like really pleased with how they designed the base plate and the top cap. And you can see it's just this bottom edge that adjusts the, the guard, basically the guard. And so, I don't know if you can quite see, right here on the corner, you can kind of see there's the blade clamping. And it's all the way to the edge of the blade, and that doesn't move, so it's perfectly clamped. And I, I really dig razors that have really, you know, firm blade clamping. Um, it might not be an issue for everybody, but some razors that don't for me, um, just for instance, the, the footer, whichever one is kind of familiar with because there's all the Chinese knockoffs and everything now. Um, that razor design for me has, you know, good blade clamping on top from the top cap, which is pretty standard, but it doesn't have really any blade clamping on the bottom. And so I find, depending on how I use that razor, particularly against the grain, I get a lot of chatter. Uh, 
the blade flexes a lot for me. And that ends up resulting in a ton of irritation, a ton of weepers. And occasionally some significant cuts. So I try, I don't like razors that have a lot of tatter like that. It doesn't work for me, for my hair type. This is so smooth. I'm I am really shocked at how smooth it was. I shouldn't be. Black Sun's legit company. They make legit razors, but a little bit of irritation right here on the bottom of my neck. Cheeks look great. That's a fantastic shape right there. I'm, I'm super, super pleased with this razor so far. Very, very smooth. Easy to use. Forward's a really good choice. Cheeks are super glass smooth. I'm going to do a quick cold water splash. Well, I'm going to do a quick touch-up pass right here, and then a cold water splash, and I'll be right back for my final thoughts on the, the Osprey. All right, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. So the Osprey, I really enjoyed on the first juice. As far as this handle design goes, your hand does kind of sit, my hand sits a little bit lower than it usually sits. I think I tend to grab razors up closer to the neck. Um, obviously my hands want to come down to where these grooves kind of sit, which is probably intentional. This is where, you know, the grippiness is going to get the best. Otherwise it's pretty smooth stainless steel. So if your hands are trying to grip up here, unless they're actually gripping the, the knob for the adjustment level, it might, you know, it might be a little slippery up here. Um, but my fingers naturally kind of fell under those grooves and it does a really good job keeping my hands there. I didn't have an issue holding it with a wet razor and wet hands and I rinsed it off and tried it and it, and it worked just fine for, you know, grippiness factors. Um, I didn't find it hard to use at all. It was really smooth, had a nas nice natural, you know, 30 degree angle for, for use. Um, I found it very smooth, very intuitive to use. For some reason it felt a little... I had a couple spots when I was going to my, you know, my trouble areas down here on the bottom of my neck where my hair goes the other way. Um, super smooth on my neck, super smooth going up right here, but then when I get these spots right here, for some reason it felt a little aggressive and I wasn't sure why. Like it suddenly had more blade feel. I don't know if maybe I adjusted the angle and it was kind of on me. That's what I'm guessing because it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Um, so I, I do think I have a little bit of irritation down here. Uh, but other than that, I don't I, I didn't have any irritation on my cheeks or the rest of my neck. It was just this, you know, kind of trouble area for me. We'll see how it feels with the splash. Uh, but I really did enjoy this first pass. Um, for, you know, I did a few touch-ups with my, on my, this like this pass right here. The hair grows this way. Um, I usually always need a touch-up pass right there to get it smooth. But other than that, my face feels fantastically smooth right now. Like, fantastically smooth. Really, really smooth. I have to compare it to some of my more efficient razors, see where it kind of stands. I'm using the matching splash here. We'll see if I got uh, any irritation other than what I expect on the neck there a little bit. I didn't have any real, you know, issues I can cut myself. I had one little weeper, like right in this area here, one tiny little one. And I only saw it once in the second pass and then it just closed up on its own, so. Okay, lots of burn. Wow, it was, a, it was a lot more burn than I was expecting. Not sure what that's about. It might be the alcohol and the splash. Um, I think she uses perfumer's alcohol. Where's that? Which is a perfumer's alcohol. I don't know if that differs from what other people put in their splashes, what kind of alcohol. I know I don't really care for the smell of the alcohol in this one, but it evaporates pretty quickly, so I just kind of tolerate it. Um... That stung though. It stung a lot. So I think it might be the alcohol that she used. Uh, but I, I will definitely try. I'll use a different soap next time I use it with a different aftershave like A&E, which is kind of a standard for me. And uh, see how his splash works. Or, I just got a lot of irritation. My skin is not red. Uh, so if I did get irritation, my pre-shave works. I don't have any redness. But super smooth. Um, that little burn from the aftershave is gone. And my skin is very, very BBS. Super great. Um, I dig the razor. I'm probably going to keep using it for the next week or so at least, like exclusively, without going through my rotation, which is more difficult than uh, sometimes it is. I kinda wanna, there's all these razors I wanna try out or just continue to use. Or, I'm still playing with like white razors and shave vets and stuff too on the side. That was a great shave, I really like it. 
Uh, I'm gonna put on some of this uh, a and &E Hoshitsu oil uh, for a post shave bomb in a minute and spray some of the EDP on for this Olympus. I dig the white sage, but I, I do, I really like this razor. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. I'll post some more videos of it as I uh, progress through. I might try it up a little higher next time. Um, I don't think that four for me was pretty close to perfect. I think if I went any lower, it would still be really smooth, but I might lose some of the efficiency that I desire. And so I'd either have to do too much buffing or just wouldn't get you know to the end result that I wanted. So I don't think I'll go any lower than four. Um, I did try on my hand before the video and like one, I couldn't even feel the blade at all. Like it wasn't cutting any of the hair off my hand. Um, so I probably won't ever go that low. I probably don't know if I'll go lower than four, uh, but I might try bump it up on the next shave and see if I get a little bit more efficiency with the same level of feel on like a five or a six. I don't know that I'll ever make it to nine. That's usually not my thing to go max out on these. Uh, but Fayez picked one of these up as well. And uh, I think he'll be popping a video up soon as well. And he definitely likes to go turn it up as it goes so stay tuned for those you'll get some more review videos on this here uh pretty shortly and thanks for tuning in i appreciate it hit me up in the comments let me know what you think and i'll see you here next time